Okay, um, I think I just heard gunshots outside. Okay, how many shots did you hear? Over. Uh, three, within three shots. Uh, like a young woman. In March 2008, in a small town in North Carolina, greed played out horrifyingly, leaving an emotional scar on thousands. A girl became a victim, and the trend of questions will begin. Who was that girl? What happened to her? And how did she become a victim? Watch the video to the end. Like, share, comment, subscribe. This is Crime Circuit. Let's dive into the case. At 5 a.m. on March 5th, 2008, in a quiet North Carolina town near Chapel Hill, a resident heard a gunshot and a woman scream, and then three more gunshots. Suddenly, they called 911. How long ago did this happen? Three, five seconds. And you said you heard a female scream? The police discovered the lifeless body of the young woman near the Hillcrest Road. Her name was Eve Carson, a popular student at the University of North Carolina. Eve Marie Carson was a brilliant, outgoing 22-year-old student at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Carson was a pre-med student who was majoring in political science and biology. She had a long list of honors, awards, and achievements. She was a student body president and a member of the University Board of Trustees and involved in honors programs at the university. She excelled academically. She was a Phi Beta Kappa Honor Society member and received several scholarships. In addition to academics, she had an interest in volunteering and spent time tutoring elementary and middle school kids. She also traveled to different countries to volunteer as a part of a study board program. She was due to graduate soon and had already received a prestigious job offer from McKinsey and Company. Carson had a promising future ahead of her, but on the morning of March 5th, 2008, her life took a sudden turn when she was murdered in cold blood. Eve is an inspiration. I mean, she was an inspiration in life, so she should certainly be an inspiration after her death. The day before she was killed, Carson went to a basketball game with her friends to watch the University of North Carolina Tar Heels play against the Florida State Gators. Even though her friends suggested hanging out afterwards, Carson said that she had to study and return home to her apartment. In the early morning hours of March 5th, around 3.30 a.m., 22-year-old Demario James Atwater and 17-year-old Lawrence Alvin Lovett Jr. decided to walk along the street where Eve Carson lived. The sad but truthful thing is, they came to Chapel Hill with one thing on their mind, to rob somebody. And on March 4th, in the evening, Lovett called his friend Jason McNeil. He wanted McNeil to drive him and his friend Rio to Chapel Hill so they could steal from somebody. McNeil said no. Instead, Lovett used his mom's car to go to Chapel Hill. There, he and Atwater looked for someone to rob. And who knows, if that someone was a brilliant student. Eve Carson. While DeMario and Lawrence were walking in the streets, they spotted Eve Carson through her window of her apartment. Carson had just opened an email on her computer at 3.35 a.m. and subsequently she decided to leave her apartment and was heading towards her car when Atwater and Lovett confronted her. They would forcefully make their way into Eve Carson's car with Lovett driving and Atwater in the back seat. Atwater held Carson at gunpoint in the back. They held and threatened her to take her to the ATM to steal money, and at 3.55 a.m., they would take $700 from the ATM at University Mall in Chapel Hill. Meanwhile, at 4.30 a.m., Carson's friend, Singer, came home to check on Carson, where he found the door open and the lights on, with Carson and her 2005 Toyota Highlander would be missing. Her calls Carson on her cell phone, but no one would answer, and at 4.44 a.m., they made another attempt to withdraw another $200 from a Bank of America ATM at Northgate Mall in Durham at 1058 West Club Boulevard. During the crime, Carson tried to talk to the young boys, asking them not to harm her. She begged for her life, offering them whatever they wanted without needing to kill her. However, Lovett and Atwater decided to kill her because she had seen their faces. They took her to the wooded area near UNC and realizing 
that she would be killed, Carson asked them to pray with her. The North Carolina student body president likely raised her arm to try to shield herself from a shotgun blast that hit her in the hand and head. That shot struck the right side of Carson's head and brain. Carson got shot five times. She was first shot in her right shoulder, upper arm, her buttocks and left cheek with a 25 caliber handgun. The blood found in her lungs during the autopsy would suggest that she was alive and breathing after these shots. The fifth and deadly shot came from a sawed off 12 gauge shotgun. It went through her right hand indicating that she had tried to shield herself into her right temple and brain. Eve Carson's body was discovered at the intersection of Hillcrest Circle and Hillcrest Road in Chapel Hill around 5 a.m. on March 5, 2008. Police arrived after hearing the gunshots and were reported by a woman living nearby. The witness mentioning that hearing one gunshot and a woman scream and then three more gunshots afterwards. Carson's body would be found tilted with her left hip and her right arm bent behind her head. Her roommates later confirmed her identity. A moment of silence for Carson took place on March 8, 2008 before the Duke and Carolina men's basketball game. During their investigation, the police found Carson's SUV near North and Hillsborough streets. On March 7th, someone tried twice at 12.54 a.m. to take money from Carson's checking and food savings account at the Carolina Food Mart in Durham, but they couldn't because the bank had stopped the transactions. On March 8th, Chapel Hill police asked the public to help identify a man seen as surveillance photo from a Willow Drive ATM. A forensic psychologist mentioned that the way Carson was shot showed a complete lack of regard for another person. There's more of a tendency for somebody to go beyond, I, I guess, the, the average when you have two people there. The police initially had a hard time, but on March 12th, just a week after Eve Carson's death, they got a lead. Demario Atwater, 21 years old, was identified through a surveillance photo. He had a history of trouble with past crimes and even a court appearance scheduled right after Eve's murder. The police arrested him on March 12th. Lawrence Lovett, another suspect, was still on the run and considered dangerous. A standoff happened at Lawrence's home, but he wasn't caught. We believe the driver of the car is going to be Mr. Lovett. While checking the data of Lovett, Lawrence faced charges for another murder of a 29-year-old engineering student at Duke University who tragically lost his life in January of 2008. He was forced to withdraw money from an ATM and was later shot faced during the break-in. Lawrence was faced not guilty in the case. Lovett has also been charged with first-degree murder in the death of Eve Carson. He remains at large and we need your help in locating this individual. Lovett is described as a black male, five foot seven, 150 pounds, and I said he's 17 years old. Prosecutors were preparing to try both DeMario and Lawrence. DeMario faced the penalty while Lawrence, being 17 at the time, wouldn't face such a sentence. The complex case took two years to gather evidence for the trial. Lawrence confessed to taking $1,400 from her accounts. Jason McNeil, an informant working with the authorities, and later testifying for the prosecution, disclosed that Atwater and Lovett were involved in the shooting of Carson. Lovett admitted to using the handgun with Atwater using the shotgun. Lovett's confession revealed that Carson remained alive after the initial handgun shots. Tragically, Atwater proceeded to shoot her again, ultimately causing her death. DeMario, captured by authorities, admitted to being the person in the surveillance footage and implicated Lawrence as his accomplice. Eve Carson's case unveils a troubling narrative of judicial system failures, particularly in monitoring individuals on probation. Both DeMario and Lawrence, the two individuals responsible for this whole murder, were under probation at the time. The critical lapse in supervision played a significant role in the events. DeMario, one of the perpetrators, had violated the terms of his probation, a fact known to probation officers. However, their response was inadequate allowing him to remain at large. Further investigation revealed that an arrest warrant was served for DeMario on February of 2008, indicating recognition of his probation violations. Shockingly, he managed to secure his release by posting a $10,000 bail despite the severity of the charges. This leniency 
allowed DeMario to evade consequences until a court hearing scheduled for March 3rd. Tragically, Eve was murdered just two days before this hearing, underscoring a critical failure in addressing probation violations promptly. DeMario Atwater, facing federal charges of carjacking, kidnapping, and weapons possession, pleaded guilty on April 19th of 2010. Judge James A. Beatty sentenced him to life in prison plus 30 years on September 23rd of 2010. Atwater also faced state charges, pleading guilty on May 24th of 2010. Judge Alan Boder handed down a life sentence without the parole for murder charge and an additional 23 to 29 years for the other offenses. The sentencing included an order for substance abuse treatment and restitution of $212,000, emphasizing an unlikelihood of his release. During the hearing, Atwater apologized to Carson's parents. He knew that there's no way that being sorry can ever be enough or take it back, that he would have traded his life if he could, but he couldn't. But that apology was his. It wasn't rehearsed. It wasn't discussed. It was what he stood up in court and gave. Lawrence Lovett, after pleading not guilty to various state charges, including murder, faced trial starting December 6, 2011, found guilty on all charges on December 20, 2011 by a jury, he was sentenced to life in prison without parole by Judge Alan Bader. We, the jury, announced to find the defendant, Alvin Lawrence Lovett, to be guilty of first-degree murder. However, the North Carolina Court of Appeals vacated that Lovett's life sentence on February 5, 2013, leading to a new sentencing hearing on June 3rd. Despite Lovett's appeal, the court upheld his sentence in 2014. And so, therefore, he wouldn't have remorse if he pled not guilty. And um, as far as being human and compassionate, he's very compassionate. Prosecutors charged Lovett with a January 2008 rape to the Duke University student, but he was found not guilty in July 2014. The legal journey for both culprits illustrates the severity of their crimes and the subsequent legal complexities. That's going to conclude this episode of Crime Circuit. I love y'all. Stay safe. First and foremost, rest in peace to Eve Carson and condolences to the Duke University student. Condolences to the families. I love y'all. Stay safe. Till next time. Peace.